Irish, one of the best rebounding teams in the conference. Kylie Watson gets the tip. Notre Dame in white takes over the basketball. Miles with the ball in her hands. No Dara Mabry, no Lauren Ebo. She is still out, not dressed for this game. So the Irish shorthanded, but certainly talented. And now we'll give you a look at the pit starting lineup brought to you in a very special way by Leah Two King. Number 11, Marley Washington. At guard, number four, Amy Hayford. At guard, number 21, Malia Johnson. At forward, number five, Amber Brown. At forward, number 22, Gabby Hutcherson. Hail to Pitt. He'll certainly get to see Leah Two King come into this game as there are the first points of the game as KK Bransford putting it home for Notre Dame. And Leah Two, you'll hear much more about her story, but grew up in a quiet household, both of her parents' step. So obviously, showing you she speaks sign language that starting lineup. Well, the transition game of Notre Dame is really challenging to deal with because they push, they flatten out that zone, reverse the ball, and KK Bransford who is really good at getting to the free throw line, is taking advantage of her skill set early. Bransford now making her fourth straight start with some of those injuries that I mentioned. And it is a different starting five for the Panthers, something they've been experimenting with over the last couple of games. This is the third straight game this group has started. But kind of a platoon system you'll see Lance White use. He'll go the five in, five out couple of times throughout the game. And now we'll give you a look at the Notre Dame starting lineup brought to you by senior Dara Mabry. Starting in the backcourt for the Fighting Irish, we have number five, Olivia Miles, number 11, Sonia Citron, and number 14, KK Bransford. Moving down to the blocks, we have stretch four, number 21, Maddie Westfeld, and starting forward, number 22, Kylie Watson. As always, go Irish. I love when we can interject personality, IQ, and work ethic from the players, and getting to hear their voice is really cool. That's a great idea you had, Jen. Well, I thought any chance we get to hear from Dara Mabry, certainly better than none. Wish we could see her on the floor, but she is out with a season-ending injury. Miles, can she get out of the jam in the corner? She can, finds it open, Bransford. Notre Dame in her man-to-man -man defense. Amy Hayford with the basketball for Pitt. Panthers coming off their first ACC win at home on Sunday against Virginia. One of the reasons why Notre Dame is such a good rebounding team is because they play a, a softer cover. They go underneath ball screens with Pitt. They do a good job of closing out. They box out and check out on the glass. They're plus 11 one of the best rebounding margins in the country. Kylie Watson committing the foul on the play, puts Malia Johnson at the free throw line for Pitt. Neil Ivey telling us, still trying to figure things out with the continuity of this group that she has healthy at the moment. I think Neil Ivey is a, a terrific student of the game. I think she studies and she's looking for trends and she's trying to figure out without Ebo and without Mabry, which are two significant pieces to their puzzle, how to play a little differently. And KK Bransford gets the start, and, and I think this is a Notre Dame team that'll feature Maddie Westbilt a little bit more now. More shots for Maddie is a good thing. Watson, a wide open look that time. 5-2 the score for Notre Dame. Brown calling for it inside. She's been a little quiet. Washington has her shot blocked by Citron and then commits the foul. See, Citron does a really good job of not taking that ball fake. And you've got to know that Washington is a left-handed shooter and she likes to shoot the three. That's good scout, scout report defense right there by Citron. Let's see now, Debbie, if this does make a little bit of a difference in one way or another that 
all five chains just happened for Pitt. So big time scores like Dacian at Harris, Lee to King, both coming onto the floor. I think you have your top two leading scorers coming off the bench in this second rotation. Gives you a little bit more of an offensive punch. Jump ball, and then Pitt will take over. And there you see Lance White, his fifth season with the Panthers. You know what, Jen, I remember back in the day when Dean Smith used to employ the blue squad. And the blue squad would come in and they'd play like two minutes really hard. And then he would sub them out. And they'd go as hard as they could. Well, that's kind of the system that Lance White has put in place. Very similar. Play hard, get your minutes, and then sub the next platoon in. And he does have a deep bench, probably as deep as he's ever had in his time at Pitt. So he said what he really liked was this way that he's been subbing. They know they're going to get their minutes, and they know who they're playing with. 11 players play 10 plus minutes in this style of play. Now, they got to do a better job in transition of stopping the ball. I know you're trying to get back by not going to the offensive glass, but you know, you can't let Notre Dame just dribble the ball up the floor uh, uncontested. King just came on the floor, picked up the foul for Pitt. That'll be something to watch for. She's an important player on the inside. Put Bransford back on the free throw line. Avery Strickland, one of the second group to come on as well. Taisha Exenor will get it back. Dejanette Harris pulls up. Glass no good. See Harris playing zone, but you got to get on Miles right away because if you let her see the full court, she's going to pick you apart. She's too good with the ball in her hands. West spelled around and now Citron kept it for a moment for Notre Dame. And then as both players going for the ball, West Bell whistled for the foul. So Kassan Prosper, Nat Marshall both onto the floor now for Notre Dame. Dejanette Harris led the Panthers with 14 points in their win against Virginia, pressured here by Citron. Shot clock getting under 10 now. Shot is up and in from Lewis. Shanice Lewis, the transfer from Maryland, the graduate, plays the point, getting some extra minutes, was er hurt earlier in the year. She's really starting to add some production to this lineup for Pitt. She's been their best three-point shooter in conference play, hitting 35% of her attempts. That was the first made field goal for Pitt. Make it two in a row. Dejanette Harris has been a player that has, in the last four games, has been play, averaging 11 and a half points to give them a second double-figure score. Oh, look at that pass. Prosper, the early enrollee for the Irish, playing a lot more minutes than she probably anticipated, but important minutes she's had to play coming off the bench for Neil Ivey. Oh, open look inside, or not so open, says Citron. Good recovery defensively. That should have been two points for Pitt. Panthers on a 6-0 run have taken a two-point lead. Pitt high hands in their zone. Miles looking for her first points. Prosper the offensive rebound. You mentioned Prosper as an early enrollee, just like Olivia Miles was when she came to Notre Dame. Prosper is going to be a really good player. U17 Canadian national team. She's long and athletic. When she gets a summer here and gets into the weight room, she's going to be special next year. Inside look for King. Miles behind the back. Citron, another big rebound, but 
It's going to be a foul against Prosper this time coming over the back. Tight one here so far. We are all tied at eight, just under three to go in the first from Notre Dame. Walking around, um, she is in street clothes, but the last time I saw Ebo in a Notre Dame uniform, she was getting 19 rebounds against the Tar Heels. I remember that. And then, of course, Dara Mabry. I mean, 301 threes in her career. And I, I will admit a special spot in my heart for those Mabry girls, including their mom, Patty. I got uh, Mabry wheeling by us earlier today <laughs> on video, which I'm looking forward to posting. I just think she's got an incredible spirit about where she is in her life right now, trying to figure out what's next. Yeah. It's not just the points and rebounds. A lot of the leadership, Neil exactly. Ivey told us that this team's trying to figure out how to fill that void as Citron drives in is fouled. There's Dara. Dara has a bright light and a bright future. It must have been tough growing up with Michaela and Marina <laughs> and her brother Roy, I believe. I'm sure Patty had it all under control, though. You know what? Th this is. Um, it's a great place for Dara to figure out what's next. Notre Dame will provide every service and every resource available. She'll have great rehab. She'll get back healthy, and then she can decide what she wants to do. Look, she's got somebody bringing her snacks <laughs> while she's over there. I mean, she's got the life right now. <laughs> Scooting by, as you said. <laughs> Obviously still very invested in this team, which Still has everything they want to play for, ranked right? number 10 in the country at the moment, sitting just behind the Duke Blue Devils in the ACC standings, a team that just beat them on Sunday in their last game. That starting group of five back on the floor, by the way, for Pitt. Hayford keeps it with her left. Nice drive. Really strong take. And this is a Pitt team that doesn't shoot a lot of threes but they can get to the free throw line, and that's gonna be key for them in this matchup. Miles to Watson. Gabby Hutcherson going for the block instead of foul is called. It's against Malia Johnson, her first. So Kylie Watson on the free throw line, just a 51% free throw shooter does miss the first. And coming up next, another big game here on ACCN. Diamond Johnson, number 22, NC State taking on Jewel Spear and Wake Forest. That's tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on ACCN. Wolfpack also looking to bounce back. Short week for them. Loss on Monday. And play for K. Game against Virginia Tech. I know you were there for that one, yeah. Debbie. Virginia Tech played like they were in total charge, and they looked like a really well-balanced team. Now, NC State's got plenty of pieces to figure it out. Remember, there's a championship pedigree with some of those players, and I believe Westmore will figure it out. You know, they just got to move the ball better. And Wake Forest has won three of the last four, so this is not going to be an easy challenge over there in the Joel. And the Deeks have been especially good at home, as has Notre Dame. Been good traditionally and in this season as well. Nine and two on their home floor. Miles. Another offensive rebound, but a block. Westbelt, it's blocked again, but the Irish still pick it up. See, this is where Notre Dame can just pound away with their size. We mentioned their plus 11 rebounding margin, but they average 14 offensive rebounds, and it sets up a triple. First make of the game from three for the Irish. It's the kind of emotional lift once you crash the glass like that, and it's the last possession here for Pitt. Rebounding advantage 12-7 in favor of the Irish right now, but Hayford's been good driving with her left. That's the last couple of baskets for the Panthers. Five now, Hutcherson takes the shot, and Miles with the rebound. She'll give it a heave. A one point game after the first quarter. 10th ranked Notre Dame trailing the visiting Panthers 14 13. You know, morph and change 
the way you, you trap and, and the look of your zone, I think you can try to keep Notre Dame off balance because that's the last seven, seven games, it's been strictly zone for Lance White's team. Travel there by Bransford to start the second quarter. Fifth turnover by the Irish. Starting five back on the floor for Pitt. Well, Notre Dame neutralizes their five turnovers with six offensive rebounds. They have a minus turnover margin on the season. I think that's the one area that I still believe they need to clean up and fix a little bit. And not having Darrell Mabry as a backup point guard means that head coach Neil Ivey has to go a little bit deeper into that bench. And once you get past Jenna Brown, she said it's point guard by committee. In the gap, what you want Notre Dame to see is a second level jersey so you can't drive and penetrate. You want to force that kind of shot, but then you got to rebound. Yeah, that's been the thing, as you pointed out. You know, the Irish have not shot the ball particularly well, especially from outside. They're one for eight, but boy, have they hit the glass. Well, they average less than five made threes a game. So they're very good at doing this, getting to the free throw line, crashing the glass. Their transition defense is, is solid. They don't give up many easy buckets. They make you work. But I guess if you are Pitt and you're putting somebody on the line, it's probably the one who's a kind of 58% free throw shooter who you put there. This is Watson. She's 0 for 3 so far. I think Notre Dame has size at every position on the floor right now. Hutcherson had to come off before those free throws after picking up her second personal for Pitt. So Leah Tuke King back on the floor. 10 to shoot now for the Panthers. Amber Brown still scoreless. Trying to get over the much taller Watson. No easy task. It'll stay with Pitt under the basket. So four seconds on the shot clock and Lance White's staff worked on these plays today because situational offense is really important when you're taking a top 10 team on a road. You gotta execute. Four on the shot clock. Brown, tough spot to catch the ball. Miles will run if the opportunity is there. She finds Citron, good. And that's the right choice with this lineup on the floor. If you see Citron spotted up from three, you better put the ball in the pocket so she can fire away. Citron, 46% from three for the season and in conference play, just a little bit higher. See Miles getting a full head of steam, gets to the top of the key, and there's Citron once again. Another offensive rebound, this time it's Westbeld, allowing the Irish to reset. Watson, Bransford. Citron picks it up. Six to shoot, did not reset. Does Miles know it? She does now. Well, that'll do. First points of the game for Olivia Miles, leading scorer, averaging just over 15 for the Irish on the season and a five-point Notre Dame lead. Washington. Nobody there to rebound. Everybody getting back defensively for Pitt. You still have to stop Miles. I think you got to pick her up a little bit earlier in that zone because she is coming straight down the middle of the floor and she is very dangerous. Pitt led by as many as four in the first, but it's a 9-0 Notre Dame run at the moment. King spinning, has it blocked. Miles casual to Watson around and out. And there is a foul on the floor. What a nice drop off. And that's what I'm talking about with Pitt. You know, you're letting Olivia Miles do what she wants and she's too good. You gotta take something away. Keep her on one side of the floor. If you let her come down the middle, she's got too many options. 
part of what makes Notre Dame so dangerous is their Citron and, and Maddie Westfield are both really good three-point shooters. Watson back on the free throw line. Gets her first of the evening to go in. Second unit on the floor for Pitt. I mean, the last five games for Watson, she's had more rebounds than points. And that's the easiest spot to block out is on the free throw line. And you got to know that she's a 50% free throw shooter and you have to be ready to box out. Dejanette Harris. Exenor gets it back. Tough battle in the paint. And it is Watson who comes away with it for a moment anyway. Now here it's in the hands of Miles. Running the lane, Westbelt, no call. Prosper, who had the last points. And it'll stay with Notre Dame. It's a small, quick lineup on the court for Pitt. And they are getting beat on the glass. Notre Dame is already plus 12 in the game. They have 11 offensive rebounds. Shot and the foul as Westbound will be going to the free throw line, try to complete the three point play. Good screen by Prosper. No pressure on the inbounder. And it is all Notre Dame in quarter number two. The Irish outscoring the Panthers 12 to nothing. Tenth ranked team in the country. Flexing their muscle second quarter. Interesting. In the game for the Irish, they are outscoring Pitt 13 to nothing in second chance points. A little extended pressure off the timeout by Notre Dame. See, this is where Pitt needs to look to drive and score quickly. You get Notre Dame unorganized, trying to defend uh, in the full court, and I think that's when you can attack them in the gaps. And they've got players, right? Deshanette Harris, Amber Brown can attack the basket. Here's Harris. She is fouled on her shot attempt. Dejanat Harris just went over the 1,000 point mark in her career. She's a player that over her five years at Pitt that we have really enjoyed watching. She's going to be the first in her family to graduate. She's such a, a fun loving kid to be around. I know her family is proud of her. All of them, Booby, Day, Fat, Naya, Addie, and Diggy. She's one of six and those are her nicknames for her brothers and sisters. I knew and you it, were ready. Every time I have one of their games, you know I gotta bring up you, the brothers gotta, and sisters. You gotta bring it in. Day Day and the crew. I like the change by Lance White also off the, off the free throws to go to a, some half court trapping. Shanice Lewis whistled for the foul though on the play. I mean, if you're gonna go with this small lineup, you gotta use that small lineup to try to speed up Notre Dame because they're getting comfortable running their stuff and then throwing it to the glass. Citron on the bench at the moment. Jenna Brown on the floor for the Irish. Now Marshall out there as well as Prosper. Miles and Westfeld, the two starters on the floor. Harris kicks it out. Destiny Struthers shot off the mark. Miles. King, who did our starting lineups earlier in the game for Pitt, pulling down the rebound. Struther, better look that time. Lewis looking inside for King. Harris. Jump ball eventually called by our officials. It'll stay this end.
Debbie, does Pitt look a little hesitant to shoot at times to you, or, or what would you like to see no. from them a little more offensively? I mean, Pitt on the season only shoots 39% from the floor. So you got to find other ways to generate offense. And getting the ball inside, attacking off the bounce, getting to the free throw line, those are ways uh, and, and off their defense that they can get some easy buckets. It's not easy to score against the size of Notre Dame. Dejanette Harris taking advantage of that open look that she was able to help create. Last time down the floor, eight to shoot for the Irish. And you gotta know the scout, right? It's gonna be up to Citron to knock it down. The shot clock winding down. Crowd thinking that ball should belong to Notre Dame, but the call is that it goes to Pitt. And you know what? I, I like that call only because it's better than putting another foul on Westbelt, who might have been called for over the back. So I think that's a good piece of officiating. Westbelt, one personal foul, has six rebounds in the game. Pitt's doing a really good job of moving the ball side to side. Now you get an isolation. You got it. Look at that drive right there. That is a tough two off the bounce by King. King, the junior out of Washington, D.C., taking it right at West Bell. Your percentage of scoring goes up each time you reverse the ball to the other side of the floor because what happens is you get the defense closing out late. That gives you a chance to drive, and that's exactly what King did in that play. Two, 67% free throw shooter on the season. Gets the three-point play. And just like that, after that dominating start, 12-0, I believe it was, Notre Dame in the quarter. It's a four-point game. Bransford. That's an offensive foul. It was King. They are drawing the charge. A couple of back-to-back -back plays by the leading scorer for Pitt, Leah Two King. A deflection. And you gotta referee the defense in those situations. So just under three to go in the first half. Panthers hanging around. Lewis up and over Bransford. This is the kind of hanging around that I was talking about. You know, you can stay within two or three possessions at the break. This is a really important 2.30 remaining in the second quarter for Pittsburgh. Good look inside for Watson, who makes it and is fouled. See, that's just the size of Notre Dame in the high-low game. Pitt can't counter with that kind of size. So you got to have better pressure on the passer. But that's a very well executed pass by Marshall because it was away from the defense. Marshall just used that height advantage to grab the rebound. Miles, a dart inside to Bransford. And she'll go to the free throw line. Notre Dame already has shot 13 free throws in this game. Second personal on King. I mean, this is off the dribble, left-handed. Gets enough zip on it to slip it through the middle of that defense. What a great find by Miles. And KK Bransford. Her contributions also increasing, obviously getting into the starting lineup now. These last four games, loves to drive it, get to the basket. She's four or five from the free throw line, has six in the game. Six point Notre Dame lead. Both teams have had their runs 
Watch 15-0 for Notre Dame as Dacian and Harris drives with some style. With a little scoop by Harris. She was a part of the 7-0 run that helped the Panthers get back into it in this quarter. Now has nine in the game. We were talking about leadership with Dara Mabry earlier, Jen. This is the kind of leadership that Day Harris brings, right? Strong attack off the bounce all the way to the heart of that Irish defense and high off the glass. How much fun were those last two plays to watch? You think about that pass from Miles on one end, then you get Dacianette Harris, the acrobatic drive and finish on the other end. Product is the narrative. The product is the narrative. The players are really good. Sells itself as Citron adds a couple more. She has seven. King going against Marshall this time. Those long arms of Citron snatching the ball out of the air. She'll take it herself. Now station at Harris, full head of steam, trying to get around. Miles does the spin, the foul, and some free throws coming. See, this would be or could be a four-point swing. It was numbers on the other end for Notre Dame. Harris sprints back to get in the play and then sprints the other end to get to the line. That's the leadership stuff, right? The extra effort. ACC Unity Week tips off next Saturday, and here's our ACCN basketball doubleheader. Pitt just a game behind Clemson on the men's side. In the ACC standings, we'll take on Virginia Tech at 5 Eastern, and then the ACC leading Tigers We'll square off against Louisville in the second game. That's all right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Clemson and Pitt on the men's side are two excellent teams, very well coached. Jeff Capel has done a fantastic job with the Panthers. And Brad Brownell at Clemson. Miles undaunted as she drives and is fouled. That's what I was talking about earlier, about making Miles see different levels in the gaps, in the paint. And if she goes one-on-one, -on -one, she's quick and explosive. If you make her see gaps, maybe you keep her from deciding to drive in there and making a play. Just four points in the game for Olivia Miles. She does have four assists. Final 45 seconds of the first half on the clock here from Purcell Pavilion. Most of the time, I would say you could get a two for one in this situation, but that's not the way Pitt's offense is constructed. Leah Johnson can't get her shot to go. Brown drives and is fouled. It's like Citron, the one whistled for the foul, her first. We've already had a combined 24 free throws shot in the first half. These will be the first attempts for Amber Brown. This is a senior who has started every game of her career, her 104th straight start for the Panthers tonight. And you know, Jen, the double-digit lead that Notre Dame had in the early part of the second quarter was because they were killing Pitt on the glass on the offensive boards. They've only had one offensive rebound since then. And Pitt has been able to get to the line. That's the first point of the game for Amber Brown. Player who's not quite found her groove these last couple of games with these different starting lineups and platoons that Lance White has employed. They'd love for her to get back going again. Harris already passed her season average with 10 points. Five-point game, 15 to go in the first half. Just getting our night started with ACC Women's Hoops here on ACCN. NC State Wake coming up after this one. Miles had nowhere to go. And no shot to be had. So it is indeed a five-point game after our first half here at Notre Dame. Can't wait to hear what 
Former Notre Dame Hall of Famer Muffin McGraw has to say she's in studio along with Kelsey Riggs, Kelly Gramlich, and Lexi Brown. Let me try and give the people what they want, Jen Hildreth. <laughs> Welcome. And can put some game pressure on Notre Dame. They're the top 10 team in the country. Pitt has one win in league play. And this has been a very telling quarter for the Panthers on the season. They have been better in the third quarter in their last couple of games. And so we'll see how they come out. Some tough defense being played. Six on the shot clock for Miles. Starting five back on the floor for the Irish. Westbelt, another offensive rebound. She's been doing a lot of that tonight. So big and strong on that weak side is Maddie Westbelt. And she's got good timing on her weak side rebounding on the offensive end. Now they're going to the free throw line, and this is where Notre Dame has been able to pick up 10 of their 33 points in the first half. Westfeld, 6.6 .6 rebounds in the first half. Two teams shot a combined 26 free throws in the first half. We'll see if that continues to be a storyline in this game. Starting group back on the floor for the Panthers as well. Marley Washington, Gabby Hutchison setting the screen. Amber Brown with the ball now. Leah Johnson driving to the basket and it's good. Three sides, Notre Dame doesn't switch on their man-to-man. -man. Great take off the bounce. Strong right hand, good execution off the halftime by Lance White's team. And this is the group, Amy Hayford defending here, Bransford that Lance White expects to come out and set the tone. That's why they start, that's why they start the second half. Notre Dame extending to 2-2-1. Two, two, Ball back into their zone. We didn't see any zone from Notre Dame in the first half, we're seeing some here. See how the Panthers handle it. Hayford had a couple of good drives in the first half. Over to Hutcherson for three. Gabby Hutcherson, a 31% three-point shooter. Junior transfer from Ohio State where she spent her first two years. Well, she's really the only size and length they have. And she's knocking down triples. Yeah, that's the bonus, right? Yep. Miles. Brown the rebound for the Panthers. Hutcherson feeling like she's got the hot hand right now. Panthers in the lead. Last five points, and Gabby Hutcherson gives Pittsburgh a one point lead. Pitt did have the lead for a little under five minutes in the first half, Jen. Yeah, they went on a run. And then the Irish went on a run of their own. Westfeld, short corner good. Throw the skip over the top because you can, back and forth. Good decision by Maddie Westfeld. Nine points in the game for Westpel. One point Notre Dame lead. Notre Dame stays in that zone. They do trap the baseline. Shot clock winding down. Good defensive stand by the Irish. Miles saying, let's go. Ready to set somebody up. It's Bransford. This is where you got a defensive fake or stunt at Miles when she's in the open floor like that and she's coming downhill. You got to do something to try to disrupt that transition game. Washington using the shot fake, but then, oh boy, big block from Westbell. Cues the break. Citron, patient. 
the shot to go. Citron is definitely the number one target for Miles in transition. Nine points in the game for Citron. Five points, five assists for Miles. Under 10, it's a kick though, so it will get it back. Now let's see if Coach Ivy stays in that zone with a more offensive lineup coming on the floor for Pitt. Yeah, we'll get our first look in the second half of Dejanette Harris, leading scorer with 10 points in the game in the first half for the Panthers. Leah Two King out there as well. Lewis finds Exenor. Here's Harris looking inside. Kassan Prosper knew it, read it, but committed the foul. That is her second personal. Fourth, excuse me, first team foul for the Irish. King. Watson thought she had the block. Instead, it is a second personal foul on the 6-4 junior. I have to think all the fouls, the disruption, as long as Notre Dame doesn't make too many of them, when they're the ones getting fouled, maybe does that favor Pitt in this matchup, Debbie? Well, any way you can shorten the game, shorten possessions, keep Notre Dame out of a rhythm. You know, I always thought that Notre Dame was a really good rhythm team, you know, the way they move the ball. Miles. Ball out of bounds and maybe some concern over on the Notre Dame sideline. This team already down to just eight scholarship players available. And there is KK Bransford getting some treatment. Looks like she's getting uh, retaped. That shoe is off and they're working on her. No dear Mabry for the rest of the season. Still not sure the timeline on Lauren Ebo who's day to day, but out for tonight's game. Misses her fourth straight contest. Six to shoot for the Panthers. Well, Strickland. Strickland doing a really good job of relocating off that trap. And Lewis having the poise to dribble back up the wing and find Strickland, not turning it over. Avery Strickland, freshman out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Her three makes this a one point game. A little too ambitious, and Exenor able to get a hand on the ball. Strickland sets her feet under her shoulders and lets it fly. Pitt only trailing by one here on the road in South Bend. And then another good showing so far tonight here on the road. Well, they've handled Notre Dame on the glass since Notre Dame went up double digits in the first half. And, and I mean, just staying with them, not handling them, really. It's just got to stay with them with a lack of size. Well, I think they got to review that. I'm not sure that got, they're going to call a shot clock. I'm yeah, sorry, they don't yeah. need to review it. Yep. The basket didn't go in, my bad. That was a short shot clock to start that possession coming out of the timeout for the Irish. So one point game, mention it at the top, this Pitt Panther team coming in, their record 1-11 in ACC play. They just picked up their first ACC win, but they have been in the games within single digits in the fourth quarter and more than half of their ACC games to this point. It's gonna be a foul against Maddie Westfeld on the block out. That's gonna be her third personal. It's a great crash from the weak side by Hutcherson, who's definitely had an energetic third quarter.
Booze raining down, smiles as ever on the face of Lance White over there on the pit bench. Deshanette Harris going to work. She is fouled. Harris again working to get to the free throw line where she's three for four tonight. They fake the dribble handoff and then she comes to the other side of the basket. And Debbie, that's the third personal on Kylie Watson. So a couple of Notre Dame players now with three and Watson and Westbelt. Well, there are some great fans here at Notre Dame, and we've seen amazing fans across the ACC, and we need your help. ACC Network wants to experience each sport from your perspective. So snap a pic or take a video, tag it with hashtag all the devotion and post it to your social. You just might see it on ACCN. We're going over to the Morris Inn after this, <laughs> and we're going to post a picture of us over there with Murph, the bartender, okay. on Muffet's tab. <laughs> Deal. All the devotion, Coach <laughs> McGraw. <laughs> From one Hall of Famer to another. And Watson really had to fight to hang on to that rebound. Miles always looking to find Citron. That's why. Remember, Citron is a 50, 40, 80 from the floor. Those are her percentages. She had a game earlier this year against Virginia where she made six out of seven triples. She can get hot. Well, she has 12 points in the game, the first Notre Dame player to reach double digits. Hutcherson. And Citron is knocked to the floor. This is going to be a foul. I mean, this is a really good catch and shoot right here. Look at that beautiful stroke by Citron. That's the way you shoot a three. Two point Notre Dame advantage. Okay, I like this look right here, stretching the D a little bit. Trying to cut down that window of Miles, but look at her target is Citron on the opposite side. And that's the chance you take, right? If you gamble, you commit, you're leaving well, somebody open. The problem with opening up the floor is that you're now you're not having those levels defensively in the gap to keep Olivia Miles from wanting to get in the paint. The whole game plan has to be around keeping Miles in front and not allowing her in transition to have vision. That's how talented she is with the ball in her hands. Hutcherson. Tend to shoot for Harris. Goes to her right, kicks it to the corner. Five to shoot now. So Harris needs to be more selfish there and shoot that. And Lewis just caught in a bad spot. Westbeld takes the block. Miles. Oh, yeah. I mean, she cleanly gets to the elbow. Which is second made field goal of the game for Olivia Miles. Hit a three early on in the first half. King driving around Watson makes it. That's a tough two right there in the paint. Miles. Prosper fighting for the rebound. She gets it. Miles, a 25% three point shooter, has not made one yet tonight. As you mentioned, only two buckets. Miles is one for seven from the three-point line. That's what she does well. <laughs> Just hit a different gear and so composed on the way in. And one opportunity coming up. This is a great take right here by Miles. Finishes with contact. That's why you got to see bodies in the gap. Otherwise, she's too quick to get to her spots. Leah Duke King picking up her third personal on the play. Miles typically pretty good free throw shooter. Leaves that one hanging. Four point game, minute to go in the third. Notre Dame looking to bounce back after a rare loss on their home floor. Tough game against Duke on Sunday. And 
Amber Brown and Pitt looking to try to make it two ACC wins in a row. What a feather in their cap this would be. They can find a way to take down the Irish. Another tough bucket. Amber Brown gets right into the chest of Watson. Gonna get an and one opportunity. Does this look like a Pitt team that only has one win in the league? That's this league this year, though, isn't yes, it? Yes, it, it truly is. It really is. And Watson I, to the bench, by the way, Debbie. Fourth personal foul on that play. Jen, we anticipated it to be like this, and it has delivered. I mean, the league is really good. I heard them in the studio. Six ranked teams talking about probably five top 16 when the reveal comes tonight at halftime of the Stanford, Arizona game. Stay up late for that one. It's a 9.30 Eastern tip. That'll be over on ESPN. The problem with Florida State, I think, is they have two losses in the quad two, and everyone else in front of them has no losses in quad two. And that quad does change, but right now, that doesn't mean they can't be a top 16. I would be surprised if they are. They'll earn, they'll earn what they get for sure because they have been one of the best stories in the ACC this year. One four low, now they go to their horn set. It's the first time we've seen this alignment. Panthers with a chance to take the lead into the fourth. Tough angle for Hayford. And we're gonna stay 47, 46, 10 minutes to go from South Bend. It's a good one. And we'll have the fourth quarter coming up when we come back. You'd do anything. Uh, here's the thing for Notre Dame. 42% of the shots they've taken tonight have been threes. On the season, they average 25% of their shots from three. The zone can put you in that thinking you're open and make you shoot it. They're four for 19. They have the size advantage. They were killing Pitt on the glass early. I think they need to go back to going inside and try to get back to the free throw line because Notre Dame shot 17 free throws in the first half. They've only shot two here in the second. Panthers coming out strong, pick up the first points of the fourth quarter. Leo Two King giving the Panthers the one point advantage. West Bell loses it out of bounds. And I mean, Debbie, this is a team that in, in Pitt that has had some of their close games, have been on the road too of some of those that they weren't quite able to hang on and they played well in a loss at Louisville. And they've been right there, as you can see by some of those numbers, more than half of their ACC and, losses, they've been right there. And you know, Coach Ivy stressed that to her team, but they have a hard time believing it. They look at one and 11, right? Now you are in a fight in the fourth quarter. And Prosper thinking she had the clean block on Dejanette Harris. It is called a foul. Her third. Well, the crowd reacting to the video board. They didn't like it in here. Mm. Well, the Irish do have seven blocks in the game. And Dejanette, all five foot seven of her, unafraid going into the paint. She is 13, and you know, the last time, Debbie, that Pitt knocked off Notre Dame, Irish have won three in a row in Don't the do it. Muffet's in the studio. I know. Her, her I foot know. is tapping like crazy right now, <laughs> watching this game. <laughs> You're only making her more nervous. Don't bring it up, Jen, the last game that Muffet coached. Well, I was going to say, you can look it up. If you know Muffet's <laughs> last game, that's when it was. That'll help the Irish cause. Prosper knocking down the three. King. Oh, what a pass. And Malia Johnson could not take advantage. She's their best three-point shooter by percentage also. Good to see Bransford back out moving around. She was getting some treatment a little earlier in this half. Nearly lost it, now she does. 
And Dejanette Harris was still trying to just get down the floor. Instead, it is Miles on the take for two. Brown, strong take oh, off the another glass. Tough, another tough bucket. This pit team has come in here, and now they put some game pressure on Notre Dame. It's exactly what we were talking about earlier. Citron, she'll drive. I don't know if I would call that exactly pounding the paint as you were calling for, but at least it was a drive. Now Miles finds Westbell wide open. Gets in the paint, draws help, drops it off. I think we're going to see a heavy dose of that right there from Notre Dame down the stretch. As long as Westbelt can stay out of foul trouble, she has three, has to be careful. What you read here is the second level, and Olivia Miles does it so well. She gets in the paint, draws King, drops it off for Westbelt. Well, the ball is. Digger was telling uh, the team a story about Father Hesburgh, who was a big activist in the civil rights rally. Actually, in June of 64, he was with MLK and helped reform the Civil Rights Act. He shared a great story with the players about what Notre Dame means and why they need to not let anybody tell them they can't and handle adversity whenever it comes. Yeah, because, you know, the other story he told, Debbie, was about that quite famous game in 1974 when John Wooden's UCLA team came into town on an 88-game win streak, and Notre Dame knocked them off. Well, maybe giving these Pitt Panthers a little inspiration, motivation coming in against the top 10 Notre Dame team. Well, Notre Dame has had trouble all night keeping Pitt out of the paint, regardless of man or zone. But Pitt has been in zone all game. Oh, oh, good, good luck. <laughs> good screen by West Bell. <laughs> Wide open Citron as a result. Good play call coming off the timeout, saving that one. Hutcherson. Yeah, she knocks down another. She had the hot hand, five points in the third quarter for Pitt. It's her second three. Pitt really staying inside the three-point line. The times that Notre Dame has had threes available to him has been on skip passes or in transition. Three to shoot for Westbell. Leaves it short front of the rim. Prosper and Marshall, a little friendly fire going for the rebound. You gotta find Citron here. You can't let her get free. Oh, another or that. easy pass. <laughs> I mean, the last three plays for Miles have been simple execution. She just is always looking towards the rim. Ten assists in the game for Miles, and Westbeld has six points in the fourth quarter, helping Notre Dame with this three-point lead. It is Citron and Miles on the break. Citron, not quite. Dejanette Harris looks to see if anybody's running with her on the other end. Harris, oh, the dish to Brown, but it's an offensive foul called on Dejanette Harris. Big defensive play there by Nat Marshall. The Irish, a one possession game. Westfield, easy to. Stayed with us all week, and they really did a great job with all those little girls and 20 different activities that we had for a week. And it was really fun to spend that kind of time with KK. That was before her senior year in high school. It was a service-oriented opportunity for her and Gabby. And Gabby's a freshman this year at Harvard. Gabby's mom and I go way back. Bransford trying to help this Notre Dame team this season, only freshman on the squad. She's on the bench at the moment, three-point Irish lead.
King spins. And no contest for the rebound. The other thing I want to just say about that cap is I bought 100 of Muffet McGraw's Expect More books and distributed them to those kids. They each got one, autographed by the coach. You just trying to butter her up for the tab we're going to yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, on her later? We're, we're doubling up on the tab now. All right. <laughs> I like it. And Westbelt continues her hot fourth quarter. That is eight points in the fourth quarter for Westbelt. And Miles working a double-double. That was her 11th assist on the evening. Good look inside as Malia Johnson adds two. Good execution by Pitt. I'll tell you what, their offense has been solid here in the second half. Irish trying to avoid back-to-back -back losses on their home floor. After losing the game to Duke on Sunday, that's going to be an offensive foul on Miles. With the game on the line, Pitt does a great job. You dribble right at the defender, Miles, who does get a little piece of it. But it's a great backdoor cut by Malia Johnson. I would look for a, a similar play here by Pitt. You know the Irish got to ramp up their D a little bit. Can the Panthers stay focused in the moment? Would be such a huge accomplishment as Johnson can't quite finish. Pitt's last win over a ranked opponent 2015. Last time they won back-to-back -back ACC games, 2016-17 season. Prosper, Marshall, Miles, Citron, and Westbelt, the five on the floor for the Irish. Six to shoot now. Who wants it? Citron, good choice. And that is the right choice. Citron with another triple. That is her third in the game. She has 17, as does Westbelt. Westbelt and Miles both with double doubles. Miles lost it a little bit. Got going a bit fast as she goes out of bounds. And I think Lance White wants a timeout. His team trying to hang with number 10, Notre Dame, on the road. Something amazing is about to happen. It's called. Miles needs three rebounds to get there. 11 points, 12 assists, seven boards at the moment for Miles. Pitt with their heels on the three-point line all night. It's a tough pass for Westbelt. It's a jump ball. Possession stays with Notre Dame. Nine to shoot. Prosper. Three on the shot clock. Crowd trying to let her know. Double dribble. Every now and then, the early enroll, he might be allowed a freshman mistake. What a job she's done coming in, joining this Notre Dame team day after Christmas. This is a critical possession here for Pitt. They need, they need points here. Harris. Been the best offensive option in this game. 16 points for Dacian at Harris. King will pull up. Big rebound. Timeout, Neil Ivy and Notre Dame. They want to talk things over. Minute 13 left in this one. Now Pitt it only has two team fouls, so they need to start considering fouling just so they can get close to be able to extend the game. Pitt only has one timeout to advance the ball. Notre Dame with three remaining. So some things to consider as you look at what we've got left. It's not really fouls to give. There's just two fouls in the quarter. So they're, they're, well, it's the same, same, same thing. Two fouls. I just haven't seen that on the graphic. My bad, truck. 
They do need to think about it. I'm sure they're discussing that in the huddle. Well, Notre Dame has started to pull away a little bit more in this fourth quarter. Pitt has gone over two minutes now without a point. The Irish have outscored the Panthers 18 to 13 in the fourth after it was Pitt who had the advantage 18 14 in the third. I think what you do if you're Pitt is you, you might look to trap, you might look to get a, a steal, a deflection. You want to make sure you don't give up anything easy in the paint. Make them earn it at the free throw line. Notre Dame a 72% free throw shooting team on the season. Tonight they're 11 for 20, so I would not let them have a layup. And you can't get beat over the top right here. Pitt looking to trap, there's a trap. Still playing it straight. And Pitt thought they had it, it does go off. The Panthers out of bounds. You gotta come with high hands in that trap. And that's where the size of Notre Dame, they just can see over the top. I wouldn't foul now. Nine seconds left on the shot clock. Citron gets to the elbow. Big bucket, huge bucket for the Irish. Now you gotta score quickly if you're pit. You don't necessarily need a three. Patientette Harris willing to get the two, she does. Now do now they you, need to foul? Yeah, Gabby. you gotta foul, you gotta foul. Do they know they need to foul? Well, Neil, I was, uh, Neil Ivey's gonna take a timeout, make sure her team handles the execution here in the last 36.7. Well, as always, great basketball going on around the ACC. And every Thursday at 10 Eastern, after our women's basketball doubleheader, our Nothing But Net crew has you covered. They'll break down the night in the ACC with highlights and analysis of every women's game, and they'll look ahead at the best games on the schedule in the coming week. That's coverage you can only get in one place right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Tell you what, Florida State and Miami are locked in a tight one right now, too. A two-point game with about a minute and a half to go in the fourth. And this still two-possession game. 36.7 left, Irish in the lead. Panthers thought they might have gotten away with the steal. It is a foul. Hayford immediately says, hey, you all right? I mean, just playing hard. Like the sportsmanship. Remember, Notre Dame not shooting yet. Still, right. You, you got, got it. More. You got it. Don't get beat over the top here. Same thing. See if you can get a quick trap. Not a foul. Even one more team foul. Still, Pitt would need another to put the Irish on the line. Just not able to get what they need here. Well, they would have had a turnover, too, if they didn't commit that foul. You want to space the floor if you're Notre Dame. You want to move the ball. Pitt aggressively going here for a trap. And then a, then a foul. This will be the one that puts them to the line. Well, you don't want to foul Citron, though. She's their best free throw shooter. She is just about 86% on the season. She's two for two tonight. And she is ready and waiting to try to cushion this Notre Dame lead from the line. Pitt does have a timeout to advance the ball if Lance White wants to do that. He's getting Hutcherson back on the floor for offense. Miss for Citron. Does make the second. Seven point Notre Dame lead. And now three. do they need the three? Yes. Well, they're going to take the two. It's Harris again who adds well, to you, her season high. He got a foul. 
You have to foul. Panthers look like they were trying to go for the steal. Instead, they do eventually get a foul called. I mean, that looked like six or seven seconds went off the clock. And boy, once again, Debbie, it looks like, you know, how much has this been the story for this Pitt Panther team this season, where they have been close with some really good teams in this league. And it's moments where they just haven't quite been able to sustain what they need to get the W. Panthers call the timeout, so they can advance the ball. Down six, so still two possessions. They've gone for the quick two the last couple possessions, Debbie. If they're looking for a three yeah. here, you gotta get a three. You see Strickland there. She's a freshman who can shoot the three if she comes on the floor. Shanice Lewis, our best three-point shooter by percentage in ACC play. I say it all the time, it, you know, the league is so good and so close. Situations matter so much at the end of the game and you have to constantly work on them and drill scenarios in practice every day. That's what teams need to be doing. As you get into games like this where Sometimes you have to grind it out. I mean, this Notre Dame team can fly when they get running down the floor and Miles running the break. And they have not been able to have that consistently tonight. But they have done what they've needed against this pit zone for the most part to put themselves now in a position where they're up six, eight seconds left. Well, Try for the lob. Well, that pass is takes too long. Defense ready to react, and the Irish hold home court, which is so critical. Now they wait for the reveal. The first top 16 reveal coming up later tonight. That's on the Stanford-Arizona game at halftime.